All right, I think we are good to go here. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about Guzzle today. Uh, really quickly, my name is Jeremy, or Jeremy Amaya on Twitter. Uh, I live over in Seattle where I uh, organize the Seattle PHP user group, and I work for Amazon Web Services where I work specifically on a project called the AWS SDK for PHP. That's an open source PHP library that consists of a set of HTTP clients for interacting with uh, the AWS services from your PHP code. So in doing that, I've actually learned a lot about um, HTTP in general, and the AWS SDK is actually built on top of the Guzzle library. So I'm very familiar with that. Um, and I've been able to also contribute to the project as well. Uh, the main developer of the project is a guy named Michael Dowling, or MT Dowling, on Twitter. If you use Guzzle or you're interested in it, make sure to say thank you to that guy because he puts a lot of time into making Guzzle a really awesome library. So let's talk about what Guzzle is. Guzzle is, first, an open source PHP library. It's hosted on GitHub, and I consider it to be a well-crafted uh, PHP library as well. It follows gr good object-oriented programming and practices. It uses the uh, PSR standards. Uh, who's here have heard of the PSRs or the PHP Fig Group? So the PHP Fig Group is a group of uh, project owners of various PHP projects in the community, lots of the framework owners and big libraries, and they collaborate together to create standards that they follow and, and that they hope that other people will follow as well. So Guzzle adheres to those. Uh, so if you've worked with other projects that follow the standards, the code is going to look in a familiar in a similar style. It's going to use some of the same interfaces that are promoted. So I, I generally think that's a pretty cool idea to follow. Uh, Guzzle, the project is is run with a lot a lot of the newest and greatest tools out there. It's composer based. Uh, it uses Travis CI for continuous integration, a PHP unit for unit testing. It's hosted on GitHub. Takes advantage of a lot of the features there. Um, it even uses tools like Make for uh, building various aspects of uh, like creating fars and zips for the library itself. Uh, it also even uses Python tools. Uh, there's, we use a tool called Sphinx to generate uh, the documentation website. Um, which Sphinx, who's here have heard of Sphinx? Because I haven't until I started contributing to Guzzle. Uh, but it's, it's a, like I said, it's a Python based tool. It can create static websites. And so you, and it uses a language similar to Markdown called Restructured Text. And then it takes that and parses it and turns it into HTML website. You can use their special codes to reference other pages. But it's, it's a great way to create a documentation website if you uh, happen to have the need of doing that. And uh, Guzzle is also very high test coverage. It's in the upper 90s as far as that goes. So um, it works well. <laughs> uh, it has good documentation. Um, and uh, it's a very extensible library. So it was built with flexibility in mind because it is a general HTTP library. Uh, so you, there's various interfaces that you can use to plug in uh, to in inject your own classes into the library. There's also a very cool event system built into the library. So you can hook, in, hook custom code into various aspects of the request flow process. So Guzzle is an HTTP client. It's not an HTTP server, like most of our web applications are. It's the client. It makes requests. And so that's why we use it to communicate with web, ser web services. Using Guzzle is pretty easy. Uh, this is a, a good example here. Uh, the way that it works is you create a Guzzle client object, and there's a series of parameters you can provide to configure it. So one of the, the ones that you would typically use is the base URL, which gives the base URL of the request that you're making. Then with the client object, you there are methods that correspond to the different HTTP verbs, like get, put, post, etc. 
And so you use the, that method. You give the path of the request so that, that the path, in this case, user, would be concatenated with the base URL to, to represent the whole URL of where you're making the request. And then you can send various request options. In this case, I'm sending headers. And then I'm sending the accept header with the application JSON value. And that'll, that will make the Guzzle client make sure to create that header in the request once it sends it to the URL. When you run the, the method, either you know, get, put, post, whatever, you get back a response object, which represents all the information that the API sent back to you. Uh, like You can get things like the status code or the reason phrase, the request body. In this case, uh, for this example, since I'm expecting to get back JSON information, there's actually a shortcut method uh, called the JSON method on the response that will extract that body, do the JSON decode, and give you back an associative array of the information from the service. It's so pretty straightforward to use, and all of that HTTP lingo, all of that uh, the f funny, weird stuff that you would have to do with curl is all abstracted away from you. There's very little thinking involved. You just create a client, send the request, get back the information. Uh, so the, the general format of the method that you use in the client, you have the HTTP method is the name of the actual method that you're calling, then the path, and then the parameters. So like I said, there's, it supports other HTTP verbs besides what you saw in the previous example. So get, post, put, delete, head, and options are the ones methods that are actually defined on the Guzzle client. But there's also a generic create request method you can send other HTTP verbs too, even custom ones, if the server that you're communicating with supports it. Then in the parameters, uh, the parameters, there's lots of different things that you can send in a request. These are examples of, of some things. Headers, body, query string, cookie information, uh, timeout settings for the request, information about proxies that you might be connecting to. Now, all these are defined in the Guzzle documentation, uh, which is very, it has all of them. I think there's somewhere around 20 different types of things you can do with your request, and it has good descriptions about what values are allowed, why you want to use it, and all that stuff. Guzzle is also the HTTP client used in Drupal 8. So Drupal 7, and maybe 6 as well, had a method called Drupal HTTP request, I think, and it that was Drupal's HTTP client. And when they started working on it, eight, they're like, we need something a little bit more powerful. And they did an analysis of every HTTP client in the PHP world, and they said, hey, Guzzle is the one that has the best features and is going to work the best in our project. So, um, in Drupal eight, you'll be able to use this HTTP client method uh, from the Drupal object. It will give you a Guzzle client and then you use it the same way as I just showed you. And Guzzle is packed with features. So um, when I talk about Guzzle, I'm, I'm talking about the newest version of Guzzle. So um, earlier this year, uh, Guzzle 4 came into being and that's the one that's going to be shipped with Drupal. Um, the project that I'm working on right now, the AWS SDK for PHP, is still using Guzzle 3, but we are working on upgrading. Um, so most things I'm talking about apply to 4, but most of them also apply to 3. So uh, Guzzle has pluggable HTTP adapters, and this is actually unique to Guzzle 4. So Guzzle 3 required curl library. Uh, Guzzle 4 does not. It defaults to using curl, but it has fallback mechanisms if you don't have curl installed on your system. And you can uh, you can create your own HTTP adapter uh, because all the interfaces for the adapters are defined in the library. And you can extend those and create your own. So uh, there is one community project right now uh, for creating a React PHP based adapter, which is uh, intended to be like a non-blocking um, HTTP client, which would be cool, because then you could asynchronously communicate with web services and use events to um, kind of like a JavaScript model. 
uh, Guzzle can send requests serially, one after another, or in parallel. And it does that by taking advantage of curl's multi-handle features. So you can actually create uh, multiple requests and send them all at the same time so that it takes less time for all of them to complete than if you try to do them one after another. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, you can stream data both up for uploading and downloading through Guzzle. It handles, all, handles things related to that. Um, it has a really cool event system, so you can click into various behaviors, you know, before the request is sent, after the request is sent, when the request has errors, and various parts in between there before a request is validated. And you can hook into various parts of that request flow to apply custom logic. And um, the plugin system, or the plugins that uh, are provided with the Guzzle library, all use that event system to inject their behaviors. Well, we'll sh I'll show you a few of those plugins today as well. And then uh, Guzzle does connection pooling and keep alive. So if you're uh, making multiple requests to the same uh, URL, it's going to hold on to that connection and make, make it so that um, there's less latency overall because it hangs on to that connection. You don't have to redo SSL handshakes, it's, it's, it holds on to the, the low-level connection um, within that client object. So not only is Guzzle a generic HTTP client, but it's also a framework for building web service clients. So Guzzle has a separate web service client layer that goes on top of its core HTTP layer and provides some conveniences for um, building that kind of client. And the AWS SDK takes advantage of those features for sure. So this is an example of using our AWS SDK, um, which I said uses Guzzle 3. But all of the methods that, you, that are being run here um, are like basically uh, provided through the Guzzle framework. So there is a factory method that follows the Guzzle um, paradigm. The list objects method is not actually a method. It's something that we define with um, with data, but Guzzle knows to, you know, it has like magic get behavior. So you call that method, it knows how to look up the information about what to do with that operation and how to parse the parameters that you provide. And then the result object is a Guzzle object that behaves like an array. But it's all, I mean, every part of the, the process for building web service clients has some kind of guzzle feature that you can build on, make it really easy. And so that's what we're going to do here in a few minutes. We're going to build a client that can talk to the Twilio API. And guzzle is also a pretty popular library. Uh, on, on GitHub, it has almost uh, 3,900 stars right now. Um, which puts it, I think, in the top 20 PHP projects, maybe even a top 10, I'm not sure. Top 20, I know for sure top 20. <laughs> uh, and it's used in lots of other projects, including Drupal 8, uh, a project called Gout, which is uh, by the same person who does Symfony, which is a, it, Gout is a HTML sc scraper, basically. That's used in the AWS SDK. Uh, it's used in Laravel. It's used uh, by Tumblr for their PHP client and in uh, nearly a thousand other packages on packages. If you search for Guzzle, you'll see it in the dependencies of, of almost a thousand other projects. All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what's new in Guzzle 4 because uh, Guzzle 4 is still relatively new and um, there's been some pretty awesome improvements. So uh, there's improved performance, which is always good, right? Uh, especially if you're using PHP 5.5. Uh, PHP 5.5 actually has a uh, implementation of what's called curl easy handles, and they are faster than using curl multi handles when you're doing requests serially. If you're using parallel requests, you still use curl multi handles. Guzzle 4 has simpler interfaces, so it's easier to extend a smaller core library. So it's, I mean, 
it's smaller. Smaller is good, right? Uh, the event system is, is easier to use. It no longer requires curl, but still uses it by default. And uh, where Guzzle 3 had this service description format that it only supported Guzzle's service description format, uh, Guzzle 4 allows you to create custom service descriptions. Uh, so you could technically, uh, you know, if you had an API that you defined with like the Swagger specification, you could create um, a description handler for that type of uh, API description so that you could uh, know how, Guzzle could know how to use that to talk to your API. Uh, so the swappable HTTP, HTTP handlers is a cool feature in Guzzle uh, because it means that curl is no longer required, but it does what's best for what you have installed. So there's four adapters uh, built into Guzzle. So there's the, the curl multi-adapter, which is basically what Guzzle 3 did, which uses curl multi-handles under the hood. Uh, so if you have curl enabled, it will use that. If you're using PHP 5.5 with curl enabled, then it'll also be able to use the curl easy handles when that is the best option for the request you're making. Uh, Guzzle also supports the streaming adapter, which uses um, uh, PHP's built-in stream context, like with file get contents and other and the various stream functions related to PHP. And then there's something called the streaming proxy adapter, which is what gets instantiated by default, and that uh, basically just decides what is the best thing to do based off of what you have installed and the request you're making. So if you just instantiate the default uh, Guzzle client, you get the best of whatever you have available. Unless you, so unless you're doing something custom, you don't really have to think about it. Um, it just does whatever is the best for your environment and the request you're making. It's kind of cool. Uh, in Guzzle 4, there was also an improvement to how parallel requests work. And actually, when you look at this code sample, it's kind of like a JavaScript model. So you can create request objects, and then you can send them all in parallel. So with this method, you use the send all method, and you can give it an array or an iterator of requests. And then you can create callbacks for events that happen on those requests that get sent. So every time one of those requests is completed, it'll call that first com uh, callback. Every time there's an error, it calls a second one. So you can handle those events however you want to. So you would, you know, obviously on complete, you would do stuff to parse uh, the data you need out of the response. And then on error, you might log it or um, defer some kind of um, exception until after the other uh, requests have completed. So the way this worked in V3 is that you would send uh, batches of requests. So if you wanted to do um, 10 requests in two batches, uh, it would look like, you know, the timeline for those requests would look like this. So the, that send all method would complete after the longest request in that batch finished, and then it would do the next batch. The Guzzle 4 implementation is, is even cooler than that because instead of treating it like batches, it just creates this rolling queue of requests. So whenever the first one is finished, the next one auto automatically starts. And so doing those same requests of the same length ends up taking shorter amount of time because it just does them one by one until they're all done. Instead of doing batches, it's basically a pipeline. So the, um, if you're getting into using Guzzle the first time, it might be a little bit confusing because there are multiple Guzzle packages depending on whether you want v3 or v4. The reason that we have them separated is because there are cases right now where projects need to use both at the same time due to the dependencies that they consume. So if you install, if you, uh, install Laravel through Composer, and you do a development in installation, so you get all the dependencies, uh, you'll actually get both Guzzle 3 and Guzzle 4, because the Laravel Q component pulls in the AWS SDK, which uses Guzzle 3, and the Laravel Mail component pulls in Guzzle 4, which it uses to uh, work with the MailChimp and Mandrill APIs. 
So you end up with two copies of Guzzle, and it works just fine. Um, so I think, wait, I think we made the right decision on how we did that, but if you're just searching for Guzzle, you might pull up the wrong package first. So this kind of shows you which is which. Um, and I have these slides already published on my Speaker Deck account. Guzzle 4 has lots of uh, different packages. There's the Guzzle HTTP Guzzle, which is the core Guzzle. Um, there's also a Streams library, which the core Guzzle library uses, but Streams can also be used on their own. It's actually a really cool package if you're working with any type of streams of data because it uh, comes with all these decorators that you can decorate the stream with, um, almost like stream filters, except a lot easier to use than PHP's actual stream filters, which are incredibly difficult <laughs> to use. Um, so if you're doing anything like that, that's a cool package. The guzzle command uh, package there is um, the core layer for building web service clients. And the guzzle services, actually, I have a here we go. Guzzle command and Guzzle services are what you would use to work on a web service client. The Guzzle services one is the specific Guzzle service description format implementation. Um, but you can you don't have to use that one. You can, like I said earlier, build your own. Like if you wanted to use Swagger's service description format or something else. Then there's a bunch of plugins that are all separate packages um, because you may or may not need them when you're using Guzzle but you can pull those in as composer dependencies as well if you want them. Uh, so there's the retry subscriber, which allows you to easily customize uh, request retrying. So a lot of services will do throttling, or a lot of the time you just have bad network connections where the request doesn't quite re uh, succeed. And so the retry subscriber allows you to uh, basically customize which errors and stuff you want to capture and then retry the request and how many times you want to retry the request and what type of algorithm you want to use to retry the request. And by default, it comes with an exponential back off so that you know, it might retry right away and then it'll wait uh, you know, one second and then two seconds and four seconds. But it's all customizable with, with uh, Lambda functions. The log, log subscriber is for logging, obviously. Uh, message integrity is uh, a plugin that has a few different tools for um, doing uh, message integrity checks, uh, I think mostly on the response side. So you can configure it to when, get a response back, run an MD5 on it, compare it to the MD5 that was provided in the response, and then throw an error if it doesn't match. So you can make sure you're actually getting the right data back from the API you're talking to. And there's uh, things for OAuth and uh, the progress sub subscriber uh, allows you to like create progress bar um, using the data from the request. So let's actually do something cool with Guzzle. Let's, uh, let's talk to the Twilio API. Who here has not heard of Twilio? Okay, so Twilio is a company that provides web services related to uh, telephony and SMS. So you can, if you use their web service, you can programmatically send text messages, receive... Uh, oh, okay. looks like something oh thanks. Oops. Got some, some coloring issues. Huh. Some cabling oh, well. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, but you can do things like make phone calls, receive phone calls, send text messages, receive text messages using their APIs. Um, so it's kind of pretty cool stuff, especially if you're doing any type of communication with customers through your application. So we can build a, a Guzzle client to communicate with that service. Now we're going to use uh, these packages, which I just talked about. And uh, so if we were creating a composer JSON for our package, we would require uh, the Guzzle, Guzzle services, and the retry subscriber. And I think the closure of those dependencies will get you everything that you need. And I'm also in there setting up um, the auto-loading for the library to 
the classes that we're going to write. And project structure for this client is going to be very simple. We're going to create a client object, which is going to extend the Guzzle client. And then a Twilio API, which is basically just going to return a big array of the information that Guzzle needs to be able to communicate with the service. So it's going to use the, that Guzzle service description format. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Oops. So the Guzzle service descriptions are basically a, a DSL for describing web service operations or domain specific language. It defines where the parameters go in the request, defines how the response data is represented and, and what's in there. Um, if you've seen Swagger documentation, oh dear, here we go again. Um, it's similar to that format. It's actually a superset, I believe. Should I just hold it? Ah. Um, and uh, Guzzle 4 service descriptions are actually still in beta, but they're basically exactly the same format as Guzzle 3, so it's not going to change. It's just the library itself is still in beta. So the first part of the service description looks something like this. You have the base URL for the service, and then we're also going to put the API version in there because Twilio has a versioned API. And then you have an array of operations and an array of models. So the operations represent the operations and the parameters. The models represent what the results from those operations look like. And to get the information to create that service description, I basically just went to the Twilio documentation looked at their docs and extracted the information I needed from there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the source code. I uh, have a Owly link there. If uh, Is anyone going to pull it up? Right there. I, I'm going to pull it up on here too, but in case you want to, give you a minute to type that in. Anyone still need it? Okay. So. Oh, so this is interesting. Now that I'm not mirroring, I have to look up here to see where <laughs> I'm web browsing to. Okay, so the code for this Trulu client, I just have as a gist on GitHub. It's not a full on project at the moment. Um, so basically, I'll show you how it looks when we use it first. So that's this uh, test PHP. Uh, I'm including the composer autoloader so I get all of my classes ready to autoload. Um, I'm instantiating my Twilio client object. I'm passing in these two parameters, account SID and auth token. These are parameters that Twilio needs to authenticate you. And I just got that information out of their documentation. And then we, I'll show you in a minute the description, but we've described the send, send message function, which is going to send an SMS. And the API needs a from phone number, a to phone number, and the content of the message. So those are the parameters that we'll define. And uh, then we can, it gives you back a message ID. And so that's basically how you use it. Super simple. Um, and it's gonna. It's amazing how much code, how little code. I mean, you you have to write to get this working, build, building on top of Guzzle. So, um, here's that composer JSON. I, I showed you that in the slides though. And there's the API. Let's let's look at the client object first, then we'll go down to the service description. So um, this is my Twilio client object. I'm extending the Guzzle client. And basically all this, um, this class is going to do is set up, the set up the logic I need to configure this Guzzle client to talk to Twilio. So I'm, I'm going to set up uh, this max retries uh, value is one of the parameters to my client uh, to do request retrying in the case that something goes awry. 
and then have this description path which is going to point to my Twilio API that I've defined and then I'm also making sure that I require the account SID and auth token so that I can talk to the service. So th this is a this collection from config uh, is a this little helper method in Guzzle that allows you to take a, uh, an array of configuration settings, uh, apply defaults, and then require certain values. So I'm using that as kind of the basis for handling the user input there. And then I have these two private methods that are going to help me uh, do the configuration. So I'll jump down here to client options. So um, the Guzzle web service client requires the usage of a Guzzle HTTP client. So there's a composition relation there. So um, I'm allowing this to be injected in, but otherwise it's just going to create one for you. And it attaches that retry subscriber, which is why we included that the retry subscriber library. And that allows us to recover from errors easily. And this was a configurable variable, so it'll retry the request up to three times if there's problems. Uh, after the third time, then it lets the exception bubble up because then there's probably something really wrong that you <laughs> have to worry about. And then uh, this, uh, all of this logic is part of just setting up the retry subscriber to look at typical HTTP errors, like 500 level errors. So if the server throws a 500 error, maybe it's just really busy, just getting slammed. But if you retry, it might go through. So you would want to retry in that case. And there's a lot of networking level problems you can experience that end up getting thrown as curl errors. And so using this little helper sets up your retry handler to uh, detect those and retry the request as well. And all of that hard logic is just baked into there because there's like somewhere around like 20 different curl errors that you would want to catch and retry on. And it's really best that you don't have to think about it <laughs> too much. And uh, then there is uh, the description for the, the service. So uh, I'm just doing some validation here just to make sure that the file that is specified exists. Otherwise, if there wasn't one, I'm going to include the one that I provided. Just allows whoever's using it to inject their own if they want to. And then I have a method here that ensures that the um, authentication uh, parameters get applied to every request that the client sends. So I don't have to specify it each time I, I create a request. It, the client will just know to always put those on there. So everything that we did in this object was just to configure the settings we want for Twilio, but it just used all of the Guzzle classes to do it. So let's look at the actual description, because this actually defines the parameters and operations for Twilio. And I'm only doing just the one send message one. If I wanted to, I could come and fill it in with more details. So uh, this is what you saw on the slide earlier. We have the base URL and the API version, then we have this array of operations. So I'm saying I got the send message operation. It's a post request. This is the template for the URI. So um, I have these placeholders here. And part of what I, I did in that client code was establish those two authentication parameters. Um, to always be parameters to every request, and they'll, so they'll get replaced right into that URI every time. And then I have the list of parameters. I have the account SID, which knows that I'm saying, so if each parameter you say what it is, you can say what type it is, and where it goes. So I'm saying that it's re this one's required. It's a string and it goes in the URI. So that's how it knows 
that it's supposed to look up here and replace that variable. Same with API version. It's required. The type of string it goes in the URI, and that would go right there. Then I have some of the parameters of the actual uh, service from, which is the, was the from phone number. I'm saying that's required. It's a string, and the location is post field. So because the post request, you have to send post data with it, just like when you submit a form on a browser, it sends post data to your project. So by saying post field, it knows where to put that in the actual request that gets sent over the wire. And it's doing the same thing with two, and the same thing with body. Everything is going to go in the post because it's that's what the Twilio API defines for that operation. And it's a post request. Then there's a couple other parameters um, that are a part of that method that are optional. So they don't have the required, um, they don't have required on there, but they are also defined in the post. So if they are provided, it knows where to put it. And so with that defi definition right there, it knows exactly everything that it needs to know to send that request to Twilio in a way that it's valid. And then we can also um, define what the response looks like. Uh, all of Twilio's responses are just a associated array of data that comes back as JSON. So instead of explicitly defining everything that's going to be in there, it will be in there either way, <laughs> whether or not I define it. So I'm just saying with this additional properties, okay, look in the JSON body and just give me everything that's there. And so with that file, we have a client that works like this. Uh, all we had to do was define the client object and extend guzzle and define the service description. And everything about the way you communicate with that API is handled by, by guzzle. All the HTTP quirks, all the curl quirks, it all gets covered up for you. You don't have to think about it out of mind. And when I, when I originally wrote this, I think it took me less than an hour. And I had a working Twilio client. So without Guzzle, if you were doing this with, you know, curl exec calls, that would take a really long time and you would have tons of edge cases that you didn't think about. Guzzle uh, takes all those edge cases in mind, uses the most sensible defaults um, that will make things work the way that... Um, it should. Uh, Michael, who writes the library, has is very, very intimately familiar with the entire HTTP spec. So he's pr programmed Guzzle in a way that it is very well behaved as an actual HTTP client and, and knows what to do. So pretty awesome. Okay. So in summary. I think Guzzle is an awesome HTTP client. It's also a framework for web service clients. Um, I am 100% sure that this was the right choice uh, for when we rebuilt the AWS SDK to use Guzzle. It's been great. Um, I mean, really, when we, we had our own custom HTTP client layer, um, like 95% of all bug reports were related to just how we were doing the HTTP communication. And then when we put Guzzle in there, like we rarely get any type of complaints because the, all, all those type of problems get fixed in Guzzle and then pushed upstream to us. So. so if you haven't checked out Guzzle, check it out. I would look straight at version 4. Um, it's awesome. And uh, like I showed you, with just a couple of files, we produced a working Twilio client without having to think too much about what goes on at the little level at all. It's cool. Uh, any questions? I think we're right on time. Look at that. Um, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, when you were looking at different options, did you have to look at my folder's HTTP extension? And if so... The, is it the Peckle? Peckle yeah. HTTP? Yeah. And how come we felt that Guzzle is better? Uh, so I think there, especially at the time, um, Guzzle had a lot more features and it was a lot easier to use. 
Um, it also doesn't require that you install Peckle HTTP. Um, and being a user land library, it has that advantage of being easier for people to, to pop into a project. Um, but they, I know they've done a lot of work on that library recently, too. Um, and it would be interesting, actually, to um, have an adapter layer that can use that as well. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, actually, there are parts of, there's a part of Guzzle that can optionally use some of that library to do certain things like URI template expansion, which uh, is, of course, faster to do in C than in PHP. So um, if you happen to have it installed, it'll actually make some optimizations and use parts of that library or one of its companion libraries in that case. So, um, yeah, there's, it, it, it both uh, uses it and, <laughs> and uh, competes with it at the same time, I guess. <laughs> Can you go into more detail about the easy handles versus the multi request? Uh, probably not too much detail because uh, A, it's still new, and B, I haven't really done any benchmarking about it myself. Um, all I know is that uh, the easy handle versus the multi handle is actually a concept that's been in the libcurl library for a really long time. There just weren't any PHP bindings for it, so they added that in PHP 5.5. And uh, um, they also added some other things. I, I think that the, the main thing that made it made us be able to optimize there is that they added the bindings for resetting a handle. Um, so previously in curl, you could set curl options on a handle, um, but you couldn't necessarily remove all of the options. So if you wanted to reuse that to connect to something else and use different object options, you couldn't do it you had to create a new handle. And using the same handle is where you get the optimization because the connection is still kept alive until you close it. So I think that reset um, ability in PHP 5.5 is what make, allows us to do the optimization there. Cool, well thanks for coming. Um, if you I have two other presentations during the conference. I have one later today at 5. That's about HTTP. We're also going to play HTTP Jeopardy. I've got a Jeopardy board. i got a buzzer system. And i got prizes. So um, if you want to come do that, that would be fun. That's at 5 o'clock. Uh, and tomorrow I'm going to be talking more about Amazon Web Services, uh, both in general and then also how to use the uh, SDK. So all right. Thanks for coming. Enjoy lunch. Thank you.